Okay, I'm just gonna hold the phone. Um, there are two things that I wanted to quick mention before I pop into the video, and that is one, thank you to everyone that like left really sweet messages about me not posting a video last week, and I appreciate that it wasn't met with like shame or judgment. And then two, I'm debating doing a Q&A video, so if anybody has a question, in the comments on this video, I would recommend putting like the letter Q and then do your question because I can go back and search for like all the comments that include the letter Q in it. All right, let's have me from a week and a half ago take over. in like two weeks. I'm gonna go through some recently finished objects and some things I've been working on and knitting plans and apologies about promises I've made that I am really not fulfilling. So here goes. So let's start with finished objects, which to me is like the most exciting part. Like I love seeing people's finished objects. So I'm just gonna start with that. You know, I should end with it, but whatever. These are in no particular order. It's just, as usual, whatever is at the top of my basket, I talk about first and we move down through the basket. This is my dumpster basket. It has served me well. So finished object since my last like floor talk episode with you is I finished this cat sweater. I think I made this in like a weekend in like two or three days. It's really funny, like the way I do cat sweaters, the construction, they just look so silly when they're not on a cat, but it just goes to show the neck to belly ratio of my cats is just hilarious because this is like my wrist. This could just be a really weird detachable sweater sleeve with a big hole in it. I could see that being a trend. I could see that being a trend with like high school students because, you know, it was really popular for a while. And I am sorry if you like this style. I always hated it. It was the shoulder cutouts on shirts, on long sleeve shirts. For some reason, this could be the next like shoulder cutout. It could just be an, a forearm cutout for when you really wanna show off your forearms. Next up, um, this one was in my finishing whips video, the most recent one I did. I really enjoy doing those, like trying to finish a certain number of whips in a video because it just provides the extra motivation for me to get it done. So this is a hat that I did for my husband I got a call from my little sister, so I had to reset. I don't remember where I was at or where the video cut off when I got my call, but I'm gonna start over. So this is a hat that I made for my husband and I used Drops Daisy yarn and it was left over from the Friendsgiving sweater that I did where I recreated one of Rachel Green's sweaters from the TV show Knits. Friends, oh my gosh, people. I'm not even gonna re-say that. We're just gonna leave that in. I'm just getting lost looking at this, so I did a raglan decrease at the crown of the hat. I've done this construction so many different times. Because the weather's warming up, my husband has not worn this very much, but he also doesn't go outside very much. So I've been wearing this a lot more because I go outside a lot. And he was like, stop wearing my hat. I'm like, I made it. I'll do whatever I want, which is a healthy way of thinking, I'm sure. Ah, look what I finished. These are Smart Heart socks by Kudabakika that I adjusted to make them bigger to fit the size of my husband. They are wet right now. I'm touching them. They're very heavy and wet because I've blocked them, but I finished them today. I started these. When did I start these? I bought the yarn and promised to make these for my husband last July. I think I cast it on shortly after that. So it's been a long time, but they're done. They're finally done. So in the past year, I have made my husband a sweater, a pair of socks, the second pair of socks, a hat, and a pair of mittens, and a hat that he lost. So that's all in the past year. So I'm taking a break from making stuff for him. He has a lot right now. Another finished object is this. This is a cat toy. My cat Mary loves catnip and my other one, Pippin, does not care about catnip. She has zero reaction to it. And 
a while ago, like a couple years ago, I bought at a craft fair, someone had sewn like a long tube. It looked exactly like this, but it was just sewn fabric stuffed with like catnip and some stuffing. And so she loves that toy so much. I thought I'd make her another one because I had this drop cell pack of yarn that I was gonna get rid of because I just had tiny little scrap amounts. And I was like, you know what? I'm bored today. I will cast this on despite having other projects I should be working on. So I made this with a two millimeter crochet hook. It took a long time, surprisingly, because it's really small. And I didn't think the colors would go together, but it's fun and I love it. And I was so devastated because I had plowed through this over the course of a couple days and my wrist and elbow were killing me by the time I was done because I just pushed myself too hard with that. Only for Mary to not care. She did not care about this. I had stuffed it with catnip and some scrap yarn that I had. Like I have a jar of scrap yarn that's way too small to do anything with, like little smaller than five inch sections. Yeah, but on day three, she decided to play with this. And every day since for the past like two or three weeks, I don't know when I made this or finished it. She has played with this every single day, multiple times a day. She just goes to town on this thing. That's why there's yarn coming out. She she loves this. It is her new favorite toy and she's obsessed and it just makes me so happy. I basically cry every time I see her playing with this. It, it warms my heart because I thought of her when I made it because I know that the other one is her favorite toy. She loves these, something like long like this because she can grab it with her paws and kick it with her legs at the same time. Oh, and the other thing I did was this alpaca yarn is actually Mary's favorite yarn. She, I think it might have something to do with the smell, but she loves alpaca yarn. And so that's why I was like, oh my gosh, I'll try making a cat toy out of alpaca yarn. So I have more of this left. And I'm thinking I might make her a couple other like cat toys and maybe doing something like amigurumi style, like a little small amigurumi and stuffing it with catnip and scrap yarn. And I think that would be like really fun and cute. And the last finished object is the crochet market bag. Um, this was also in my finishing whips video and I love it. I've used it several times and it's so great because the other market bag I have is not handmade, but it's one of those like market bags that everyone else has and the holes in it are so big that things will like fall through it, but I can barely get a finger through this. Um, so it's got the style of being that like see-through airy crochet market bag while still being able to like contain items in it pretty well. And at the time I did not know what the stitch that I used was called, but I've been told that in the United States, it's a triple crochet through the front post or front post triple crochet. There were a couple different ways that people said it, but essentially it's front post triple crochet. And I just love the texture it creates. I just love looking at this. This is, it just makes me happy. Oh, and I used um, Capri Eco Cotton, which honestly on my channel, I'm not gonna be recommending yarns too often only because I don't feel comfortable recommending yarns to other people since yarn selection is so personal. It's actually, it's the same yarn that I used to make this sweater. Um, and I bought a little bit of it and it's so soft and drapey and I love it with this sweater, but then I kept knitting with it and I hated it. Like nothing else turned out like this. It was always very stiff and rough. Like this is very stiff and rough. And even if I knit with this and do the same exact thing, it's stiff and rough. So something happened with this batch of their yarn where it's just soft and amazing, but put into any other application with different color. I, it just, I don't like it anymore. And due to a shipping error, I did not intend to do this, but I accidentally got 34, 34, 64 balls of this yarn, 64. And I've been using them up over the course of several years. And finally, I think I'm down to my final 10, like balls of this. And I'm so excited to get it like finally done with. I have realized that the best application for this yarn for me is crochet projects, crochet household goods, crochet bags. That is what this is for. It's not for garments. Bloop. Okay, and then on that line, this is my first apology, is in my last Floor Talks video, I showed three different yarns, like this yarn in three different colors. I think 
it had to have been like blue, white, and red or yellow. And I don't know. I don't know what colors I showed, but I showed different colors and I showed different cable patterns from this cable knitting book that I have that I absolutely love. And I said that I was going to like make knit one of those patterns using the yarn and that it was going to be like my last chance for this yarn. But at the same time, two things happened. So at the same time, I was knitting a sibling sweater, which I've already made one of in merino wool, loved it, tried to do it in the cotton yarn, hated it, hated it. It felt like wearing cardboard, couldn't stand it. And then the other thing that happened was I lost the example balls that I had shown in that video. And I no longer had a sweater's quantity of any of those yarns. So even if I wanted to, I couldn't make any of those. So I ended up donating all of that cotton yarn with the exclusion of the white balls that I've left, which I'm going to continue using for crochet items. Um, so I am sorry because I did have every intention of making one of those sweaters with one of those yarns, but I still have that book. I'm still in love with all of the cabled sweaters that I showed and all of the cabled sweaters in that book, really. So I will be making them, just not in this yarn. And that's probably for the better because I should make those sweaters in a yarn that I'll actually love. So yeah, that won't be happening. Just letting you know, I won't be making it in cotton. Should we talk about whips? Let's talk about whips. I want to talk about whips. Sorry, I got lost thinking about like, in what order should I talk about my whips? I'm losing track of my own rule. Whatever's at the top, I talk about first. That just makes it so much easier. Pippin, I swear, if you're pooping in the bathtub right now, she was not pooping in the bathtub. She might now though, because I interrupted her while she was going to the bathroom and she hopped out. So now she might poop in the bathtub just to spite me. I need, I need my iPad. I gotta pull up Ravelry to make sure that I'm saying designer and pattern names correctly. This is the Rib Lace Raglan, that's what it's called, by James Watts, James N. Watts. There's like a short sleeve version, a long sleeve version. I think I'm gonna do the long sleeve version, but this is my first all over lace sweater. And I wanted to start with something very simple, but also I'm having such a moment right now of wanting to do lots of airy lacy patterns because I don't have many summer knits. And even in the winter, it's not cold enough here to justify owning a ton of wool sweaters. So it makes more sense for me to start making stuff that I can wear more often. And I'm in love with this already. So I've run into two problems with this so far. One is I started and I messed up the lace pattern. And so I had to unravel when I got down like halfway here, had to unravel, redo it. And at this point, I'm kind of disappointed in myself because I got the measurements wrong and it's too small, but it is still very much so salvageable without risking me ruining it. So. I'm just going to keep, since it's raglan, I'm just going to keep the raglan increases going for a little bit. It's too small in every dimension. So I just, I'm going to do some things. I'm going to fix it. I'm going to make it work. This is going to fit. And I'm going to wear this every day for the rest of my life. I'm also very excited to introduce more blue to my wardrobe. Like I can't wait to wear this navy blue with my blue sweatpants because that's fashion for you. Sweater and sweatpants. But like, oh my gosh, I'm just so in love with this. I'm so in love. I'm using 3.5 millimeter needles for this, so it's gonna take a minute. It felt like forever to get to this stage, but it also felt very worth it the entire time. This is one of those rare projects where I'm not having that much anxiety about it. I feel like I normally go through this crazy emotional roller coaster with projects where it's like, it's not gonna work out. Oh, wait, yes, I'm in love with it. Oh, I hate it. The only source of anxiety I have is about my ability to increase it to be the right size for my arms and body. But I'm also pretty confident that I can do that. So I'm not that anxious about it. I am, however, going to block this. That's why it's on lines and not on the needle. I'm going to block this because when I'm doing something from the top down, I try to block it as I go because I don't want to split for the sleeves only to realize this shrank and blocking or grew a ton and I don't need to add any more to it. Because at this point, I feel like I do need to add at least another inch to this, but I just want to block it to make sure. I'm going to do that probably today. What's next? <laughs> this is a finished object, but also a whip because I messed up. So this is a vest situation with Drops Melody yarn. 
and I have a ton of this yarn. I wanted to use it up and I wanted to use it on something very simple and bulky and I self-drafted and I messed up, which is just a theme. Really, <laughs> my knitting mojo has been kind of on the floor lately because I have had to unravel so many things and I think I really need to sit with myself for a second and realize why that is. Like, am I not planning enough? Am I not thinking stuff through? And in a lot of cases, it's just been like simple, really easy mistakes to make that have such a big impact. So on this one, I made the executive decision not to do any shaping for the neckline to bring the neckline to bring the neckline down lower. That became a big problem because the neck ended up being much smaller than I expected. I thought that this was going to be bigger and stretch out a lot with blocking and it didn't do that. So this is like a turtleneck, but it has this weird fit to it. You know, what? I'm gonna put it on and show you. Okay, <laughs> maybe you can see it. I thought this wasn't gonna bother me. When I finished it, I was like, it's fine, it's not that bad, but now it really bothers me. And it's this, it's this like extra fabric I have here because of the way this fits and sits on my body. Like I don't like this flap. It's kind of super annoying. The fabric of this yarn ended up being much more itchy than I expected. And it's the kind of itchy where it's totally fine on my arms, but as soon as it's touching my neck, I can't stand it. So I feel terrible. It was such a small, like all I needed to do was bring the neckline down. And I didn't do that and that ended up being a mistake, but it's okay because now I know. And I'm also trying to get into the habit of frogging when I don't like something and putting time into making sure that it's actually something I wanna wear. When I first started knitting, I just wanted to get projects done. And I, I was worried that this wouldn't be my forever hobby. I collected so many hobbies. I wasn't particularly attached to any one over the other. So when I kind of fell for knitting more so, I don't know how to say this. So I was so concerned that I would fall out of love with this hobby because I was so desperately in want of like a core hobby. I just wanted one that I could always return to and grow at and challenge myself with. And all my other hobbies at this point are ones where I'm like, I'm not concerning myself with how good I'm doing or if I'm doing something right or how well it turns out. It's just for like, the process of it, like painting. I don't care if my paintings turn out great or not. It's it's more about like fun and I'm not gonna learn how to become a really talented painter. Maybe I will, I don't know. So anyways, now that I've established with myself, like, no, this is my core hobby. I am going to keep returning to this. It's always gonna be there for me. And now it makes more sense for me to start unraveling projects I don't love and redoing them to make them ones that I like. So what my plan is for this or what I'm thinking is I think I want to do like a really low scoop neck that's really oversized and relaxed and has like nice long sleeves. And I'm going to keep the theme of like the two by two rib on the bottom ribbing and the collar and do stockinette stitch for the rest of it. And then We'll see how that turns out. And then I might also make like a V-neck um, sweater vest just because I, I love wearing sweater vests. So yeah, that is the disappointing but hopeful not over yet story of this thing. Fun fact, this is currently my most worn knit. And it was also the least expensive to make because it was $8 in yarn, I think. And self-drafted, so I didn't have to pay for a pattern. So cost per wear, we're at like 10 cents per wear on this sweater. Don't check the math, I did not math that. That was just me throwing out numbers for no reason because I'm irresponsible with my number throwing. Oh my gosh. I really just gotta get ready to talk about failure. This is a tale of human ignorance. <laughs> my human ignorance. This has been an emotional roller coaster. This is the campfire waffle cardigan. And let's talk about it. Number one, it's as big as a blanket. Like this is a lap blanket already. So the pattern is intended to be like a mid-length cardigan. And I made the bold choice to make it a full length cardigan. Instead, I've been working on this forever. I casted it on in like September. So it's been six months that this has been on my needles and I just finished the back panel, which I now have to redo. Cause here's the thing. I knew that it was going to grow and I know like not even from blocking, but just from being in this position, like lengthwise, it's just going to 
relax into a longer form. And so I purposefully was like, great, I'm going to make it like a little shorter than I want it to be. And that'll be perfect. And then I went to do the shoulder shaping and I wasn't paying attention to the pattern. This is again, just a simple oversight that could have been resolved. So there's shoulder shaping in the pattern. Here's like the back neck portion. And then you have the shoulders on either side. And I misread the pattern and I thought the shoulder shaping was just going to be like an extra inch. It ended up being, it ended up adding an extra four inches to the back which is way more than I had planned for. So now it's too long and I need to unravel this back to before I did my shoulder shaping, redo the shoulder shaping, and then I can start on the front and back panels and the sleeves. Um, and what's actually funny is I fully decided that I was done with this and that I was going to turn it instead into a lap blanket. This is before I did the shoulder shaping. I was just so sick of this. And so I told my friends like, hey, I'm going to turn this into a lap blanket instead of a cardigan, like executive decision. It's going to be a lap blanket. I'm done with this. I just want it out of my mind. And then the next day was like, you know what, maybe I will make it into a cardigan. So that's what we're doing. I'm going to unravel. I'm going to unravel the top bits of this and redo the shoulders. I'm not giving up on it. I'm not giving up. Next, whip. <laughs> this is going to be disappointing to some people only because I've gotten quite a few compliments on... Let me start from the beginning. Similar to the cat sweater I mentioned, I had a lot of scrap yarn left over when I was done with all of my Drops Air projects and I ended up making a raglan striped scrappy sweater based on Kudava Kika's Day Up Till Dawn sweater, but I didn't follow that pattern because mine was a different gauge. So I just kind of used it as a jumping off point. I messed up because I do like that sweater and I do wear it a lot, but there are some things that make it less wearable for me. And because I made it earlier in my knitting career, there's just things I know now that I would do differently. And so I, um, I unraveled it. It's, it's a ball of yarn now. And I'm remaking it into something new. So the issues I had with it before is it was balloon sleeves, which was very trendy at the time that I made it. I realized very quickly that balloon sleeves are not for me. It's not, they got so dirty. Within a week of finishing the sweater, I went to a restaurant with my husband and I got Alfredo sauce all over the sleeve. Cause then balloon sleeves, they were so long, like way longer than this is as wide as I want my sleeves at this point. I know more than this, um, but they were so long. Every time you like went to grab something, you're just brushing over so much stuff. So that was annoying. The cuffs were way too small because I just winged it on the decreases. The cuffs were way too short. They were only like an inch and same with the collar. Like this is even too short for me, but this is still very wearable. So I'm going to not change this one, but I would have rather it had been like a two inch collar and the bottom ribbing was also only an inch and I would rather that be two inches. And then the gauge was also looser than I wanted it to be. So there were multiple reasons why I don't grab it. Like I love the idea of it. I love the look of it, but I don't like wearing it practically. So I'm remaking it and I am going to follow a different pattern because I was like, you know what, why not? I'm doing the sibling sweater pattern again and you've heard me if you've watched my other videos talk about that pattern so much. I made my first version of it black and white in Superwash Merino and really liked that. Loved it. It is going to surpass this in my most worn knit pretty soon. I wear it all the time. I love it. It is the perfect shape and drape and everything. And then I made it in cotton, hated it in cotton. And so this is my third attempt at doing the sibling sweater. There is another practical reason why I am doing this pattern with this yarn, and it's because this construction of sweater where you do the back part of the yoke first, and then you do the shoulders, and then join, do the front panel, join front and back panel, and go all the way around. That construction has been popular for a minute, and it's continuing to be very popular, and process-wise, it is my favorite sweater construction. And so I want to see how that sweater construction handles with different types of materials. What does it work with? What do I not like it with? And so I'm like, you know what? Something lighter weight and airier 
it's gonna help me fill in that knowledge gap of what yarns do I like with this construction. So yeah, that's, that's what's happening. I am very excited about this. Something that's also really interesting is when I made the original version, I was actually somewhat purposeful with my color switching to make it look as perfectly random as possible. Since I unraveled the sweater, it's still in that same order and same quantities for the stripe. So let me make this make sense. On the previous version of this sweater, the stripe that I had going all the way around, I'm just gonna make something up. I may have had six rounds of blue going all the way around the body. I don't know where that's gonna show up on this sweater because it's completely different construction. Everything's being done in a different order. So that big blue stripe could end up going on a sleeve and taking up half the sleeve of just blue. And then also there were rounds on the sleeve that were just one round around, one round around. I'm sorry. And one round on the sleeve would only get me like a third of the way through a round on this sweater. And so I'm just embracing that chaos and whatever happens, happens, happens. So what happens when I don't record for two weeks straight? I just completely forget how to do it. Whatever happens, happens. I'm really looking forward to this. I just so enjoy the process of the sibling sweater. Of all the sweaters I've made, it has been the most relaxing and satisfying for me to knit up personally. And these colors just make me smile and I have so much extra. So this is the single ball of yarn from that sweater. And if I don't have enough, this whole bag is just filled with scraps. So I have plenty to add on to this. And then something else I need to think about is I'm gonna have extra scraps left still and I kinda wanna use them all up. And so I'm debating what would pair well with this or not, maybe I do something separate. So like, I guess it depends on how much yarn I have left, but I'm thinking I could do like a matching hat or I could do a sweater vest that looks the same. Cause I only have one sweater vest in my wardrobe and I want more. And I have another apology coming along <laughs> with this sweater to another subscriber. <sighs> Someone asked me in a video, they left a comment asking if I could talk about how to adjust patterns to fit my needs because I adjust patterns like crazy. I very rarely follow a pattern through and through. I can't think of a single time that I followed a pattern through and through. I was just about to say my smart heart socks, but even that I changed because she does the toe different and some of the ribbing different. So I don't follow that pattern. <laughs> I don't really follow any pattern very closely. Yeah, I'm just kind of looking around at all the pieces I've talked about so far and only two of them are following a pattern and on both of them, I'm not following the pattern. <laughs> So yeah, this person asked if I could talk about how to adjust patterns. I was like, oh yeah, totally, absolutely. I even like replied to their comment being like, absolutely, I am so on board to make a video about that. And that's what this was gonna be. I was gonna talk about how I adjust a pattern in a single case to fit my needs. And then very quickly into making that video, cause it wasn't well thought out, I realized that's such a complicated topic for me to cover that I can't do it in the context of making a sweater. It needs to be like a sit down education minute of me talking about that. And also, I don't think I'm the right person to be talking about that. I think we need someone with more technical experience. I just don't, I think it's beyond my area of expertise and I don't wanna give away information that I'm not totally confident in. So I might still release a video about this sweater, just not, leaning heavily on the adjusting the pattern portion of it. So yeah, sorry to that person. <laughs> okay, but I'm not gonna leave you hanging. Taylor Earl from Wool Needles Hands has been doing this new concept where she's doing themes. So she makes a lot of videos. They tend to lean more educational, which I super love and appreciate. The amount of information I have learned from her has been amazing. I, I'm one of her patrons on Patreon because watching all of her videos She's who I've learned the most from and it felt wrong that I'm just getting all this information for free from her and she puts so much work and research into her episodes. Anyways, her theme right now, and it might be done by the time you're seeing this, I don't know, has been adjusting patterns. So she's released a series of videos diving into this topic because it's not something that can be captured in just one video. And I think she does a really great job talking about it. So. I, in the description, am going to put a link to her channel. There are also other creators and people in the comments, you can recommend channels that maybe have, do a good job of talking about how to adjust patterns. 
I appreciate that. So that is my second apology for the day. <laughs> Are you making biscuits? It's a very important part of the process. You gotta biscuit your yarn. This is the Ingrid sweater by Petite Knit. I talked about this in my last Floor Talks video. <laughs> I have progressed an inch and a half. Isn't that spectacular? It's like three centimeters. I started on the lattice portion on the back yoke. Um, that's as far as I've progressed. Basically what happened was with this pattern and why I've done so little on it is it's because of the yarn. This is Happy Place released by Hobie in partnership with Tony Lipsy from TL Yarn Crafts, who is a crochet channel that you've probably heard of. She gives fantastic technical information about crochet and is also a crochet designer. This is a cotton merino blend, 50-50, I'm pretty sure. It's incredibly soft. I really like this. I feel like I might buy more for another project. I couldn't figure out what pattern to do. I was being very indecisive. And part of that indecisiveness came from the color. This color is out of my comfort zone. It's her color Petrol. So basically what happened was one night I was like, oh my gosh, I should make the Ingrid sweater with it. I don't know why I thought that, but I thought that. I had been so indecisive and flip floppy about my pattern decision for this yarn that I wanted to cast it on before I could change my mind. And so that's why I have it like this. I didn't intend to work on this right away. There are other higher priority projects that I've been working on. So that's why I haven't progressed on it this much. I basically just casted it on so that I could sit there for a while until I'm ready to come to it. And I just didn't want to change my mind a million times because I was worried that I would never use this yarn for fear of not finding the right project for it. This one, not a lot has been done. This is another petite knit pattern. I'm not a crazy petite knit connoisseur. I don't know. There are people that love petite knit and like will make everything that she does. In my opinion, the thing I like about petite knit is she has very well written patterns, which makes sense because from my understanding, it is a pattern house. So it's not just her. She has technical editors. It's a whole process. She's got a lot of people with their eyes on that pattern, making sure that it is well written. I also don't need to justify why I'm following a petite knit pattern. I feel like I try to justify things in anticipation that someone is going to be like, oh, great. Another person doing a petite knit pattern. It's like, I don't care. I don't care what you say. I can jump on board with trends. I'm allowed to like trends. I just don't want to do all the trends. So this is a swatch. I didn't even start on anything. This is a swatch for the cumulus blouse. And this is not for me. This is for my mother. Green is not my color. My skin undertone, you might not know just because I color grade my videos so much. My skin tone or the undertone is cool. It's a cool undertone, but my skin is also very red all the time, especially in the summer very red and anytime I wear green it just makes my face look even more red and I feel like a tomato wrapped in a leaf and while that's a very cute image in my mind it's not the vibe I'm going for but my mother has an olive skin tone and this will look beautiful on her um, and she's just a beautiful lady so I sent her a bunch of patterns because I had already made a sweater for my husband I made a sweater for a friend of mine and it was time that my mother got a sweater <laughs> So she's been wanting one for a while and I was nervous to do it because I'm nervous it's not going to be good enough, as is my concern with all projects I do for other people. I'm always concerned that it's not good enough. And there, I just put way too much pressure on myself, which is so unnecessary because you know what? If she doesn't like it, she doesn't have to wear it. End of story. So this is going to be the cumulus blouse. We came to that decision because I sent her like a bunch of different patterns, like screenshots of a bunch of different patterns and had her narrow down which ones she liked. And then she settled on a couple. So I think I FaceTimed her or something. And I scrolled through Ravelry with her and showed it on other women with like more of our body types because we're both like more mid sizey people because petite knit is very petite and very thin, very, very thin. And so the way something sits on her isn't going to be the way it sits on my body or my mom's body. So we scrolled through Ravelry, went through and looked at all the different iterations that people have done and settled on the cumulus top blouse. It's going to be the long sleeve version in drops air. I hope it works out. The deciding factor I think on this is going to be the V-neck because I, and I think my mom is probably very similar. V-necks are difficult. Like, I don't like them to be too short because then I think what's the point and I don't want them to be plunging. So you want it like in a nice, there's like a perfect spot for it. And because she's not here and I'm not perfect, 
Uh, it's just, it's not going to be perfect. I'm just going to put that out into my universe right now. I'm not going to make this perfectly and that's fine. I'm still going to make it. You know what? I don't want to agree to anything, mom, but this probably won't be the last sweater I make for you. You know, there's that. And if you don't like it, you can give it to one of my sisters. <laughs> Next project. Uh, this is big news for anyone that's really into crochet and has been wanting me to crochet more. A brief dramatic lead up before I talk about this. Maybe this is just my experience, but I feel like most people have a spark when it comes to a hobby, like something that really sparks you and is like, yes, I need to do this. My main spark when knitting was watching Kudabakika's video where she went through every hand knit item that she had ever made, or like at least had on hand. There was one that she showed and it was honestly the most basic sweater in that collection. And now as someone that knits garments a lot, it would be different. A light pink, simple raglan cropped and it looked like a store-bought, very basic sweater. And I could not stop thinking about that. I rewatched that video time and time again. And I thought about that specific sweater. And so without following any patterns, cause knitting patterns intimidated me, I made my first sweater pattern and tried to make it kind of look like that. And I actually did a pretty good job, which was completely luck and a story for another time. So that was my spark was that sweater and being able to execute something similar to it was my spark, like that process. And my spark with crochet has happened. I've been waiting for it. I like crochet, but I'm not, I've never been in love with crochet and it's never been like knitting is my number one. And then crochet is like, yeah, I do that too but I found my spark. So, so on Pinterest, I have a knitting and crochet Pinterest board and towards the bottom of that board from years ago was this crochet dress that was definitely store-bought and not handmade. And I have pinned several different iterations of that crochet dress. It's like a swim cover up, but it's long and I'm just in love with it. I decided that it's time. It's time for me to attempt making that. So this is not much. This is not much to show. It's just triple crochets with a chain in between. So I started with a few rows of single crochets and then have just been doing triple crochets with a chain in between to give it a more like lacy, holy vibe to it. And I am so nervous about my ability to execute it. I have a lot of anxieties. I'm really nervous. It's not going to look good on me because the models I've always seen it on are very, very tall, slender women. And that is not me. I'm short and stubby, but I'm cute. It's okay. But I just, I have some insecurities. And so I've been worried that this isn't going to look good on me. I'm so worried. I'm so worried about a million things, but this is my spark because as soon as I got like four rounds into this, I knew I wanted to make more. I want to make a sweater like this. I want to make a top like this. I want to make another swim cover up. I am so driven now because I figured out what I look, what I like in crochet. I figured out what I like. I'm probably just looking in the wrong spaces, but the reason I don't feel very excited to crochet is I'm not super into a lot of the crochet patterns that I'm seeing. So I'm not super into single or double crochet sweaters because they look very thin or thick. Sorry, not thin. They look very thick and I don't like really thick, stiff, bulky sweaters. And I just couldn't figure out what do I like? So what I like evidently is smaller hook size, smaller gauge, more fine, and then simple at the same time. Um, this one, there's not much to say. I did a video called knitting for my stupid mental health, which was, I'm glad I made that video and that really helped pull me out of the slump I was having, but I made a swatch for the null sweatshirt. And as you can see, I have a lot going on. So this is not going to be cast on for a minute. This is going to just stay in this pouch until I finish up some of these active projects I got going on. Okay. And the last one is a plan. And this is my third apology for the video. <laughs> Apologies and failures. What a fun, upbeat sort of floor talks video I am doing. There is a subscriber that requested something from me and I feel bad. Someone left a comment recommending a specific article of clothing from a specific movie that I had never heard of featuring Goldie Hawn. I'm not going to say what it is, but there's a movie with Goldie Hawn where she wears a crochet top that is very interesting. And someone left a comment asking if I could do that. 
and we struck up like a really cute conversation in the comments and and I said I would try and I would do my best and I spent the next two days hyper focusing on that article of clothing because I haven't done a crochet garment before so trying to reverse engineer one without getting to see it in person and just seeing it in like grainy video form it's really hard I think I figured it out maybe how to do it and I have ordered the yarn but my intention was to cast this on a month ago and start on this but then I cast it on a bunch of other stuff and I was hoping the video would be done by now so I don't know if this doesn't really warrant an apology necessarily, but it's something I've been feeling guilty about is how long I've been putting off doing this. So I do still plan on doing this project. I am still looking forward to it. It I think is going to be an interesting video and it might be the first time that I fail in doing a recreation video, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. I'm totally chill about the idea of like doing a video where I don't end up doing well, like the result doesn't turn out well, or I fail at something. I'm so chill about that. So I don't know why I'm being so held up on this. But yeah, this is the yarn I bought. It'll also be my first project using knitting for olive yarn. This is also not all the yarn. There's some other yarn that I have for this project. This is just what I have out right now. Ooh, cute. So I will be doing a crochet vest video eventually. Okay, and then the only other finished object that I didn't talk about was remaking this really bulky knit blanket, like the hand knitting. I don't know. There's a name for it. I don't know the name. And I did a whole video about it. Um, so that is a finished object, but it's really heavy and I don't feel like dragging it out here. Oh, I'm so sorry, Pippin. Oh, she's clawed into it. All right. She's decided she's going to hold on to that. I'm thinking my priorities are gonna be blocking this, seeing how it turns out, working on this slowly and consistently chipping away at it. And I think my main focus now is going to be this sweater. And then I'll also work on getting this back panel at least finished. Oh my gosh, I literally forgot to talk about a project. This video isn't done yet. Some of you were like, great, I was planning on doing other stuff. I didn't wanna sit and watch your video for another five minutes. This is not a finished object and not a whip. It's something in between. I have a nasty habit of not always putting the toilet paper back on, the, like replacing the toilet paper roll when I've used one up. And I don't do it all the time, okay? This happens like once a month at this point. But it's really inconvenient to the other person when you go to the bathroom and there is no toilet paper to access. And I always feel bad. So I've come up with something to help. Part of the problem was a lack of storage in our bathroom. We have one cabinet and the sink like piping goes into it. So there's like almost no room in this cabinet to store stuff. So I bought in like over the toilet shelf, which has been great and super useful, but I just used it for like towels or like holding some other stuff. So it's actually kind of lost its purpose because we found out that it's not really practical to store towels there. And so we had some empty space on that shelf. And so what I thought would be nice is storing toilet paper on that shelf. But since it's like the main thing that you see when you walk into the bathroom, I wanted it to be slightly cuter because while I don't need my interior decorating to be perfect, I do want it to be cute. And hence the basket was born. This is a toilet paper basket. It holds 12 rolls. So this has been a major, this is going to be a major game changer. It's only been in my bathroom for one day, so I can't really declare that it's been a game changer, but it looks cute on the shelf. It is the perfect size. I crocheted it with two strands of that Capri Eco Cotton yarn, used a ton of it up. This took up like 10 balls at least. Um, it is, however, not done. There's a little bit sitting here. So what I was debating was how tall I wanted it to be. So I'm just gonna live with it like this in my bathroom for like a week or two and see, do I just like it as is and want to leave it? Or do I want to do something else? Like maybe adding a lace detail to here or handles or whatever, making it bigger so that there's like a thicker fold over. I don't know, but I'm kind of liking it right now. And I'm very excited at this new chance to store toilet paper in our bathroom. Cause previously we had only store like four rolls at a time. This is quadrupled the amount of toilet paper I can store in my bathroom. That's a big deal. The amount of like disagreements this is going to prevent is insane. 
I'm very happy. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Yeah, thanks for watching.